Welcome and thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Richard Morgan and I'm the Operations Director here at Nimbus 90 and also the founder of our Defence sub-community. For those of you joining us this morning for the first time, Nimbus 90 is the community for disruptive business and technology leaders. Our community includes tech experts, CIOs, CTOs, CDOs, as well as generalists who have a responsibility for, or sometimes just a professional curiosity about, the opportunities presented by innovation and technology. We deliver a range of activities from summits, masterclasses, topic-focused business briefings, working breakfasts and dinners, and virtual events. Our strength is our diversity and depth, with our membership coming from the full range of sectors and industries and job titles. Our member-driven activities enable the sharing of experiences and perspectives across sectors and the forging of relationships with peers. And our defence community is our latest sub-community for whom we're delivering uh, a range of activities to enable our defence members to network with and learn from peers and thought leaders from both inside and outside defence. So thank you for joining us here this morning for this interactive workshop on realising digital, digital collaboration across the frontline commands. This is the first of a number of activities that we will be running on turning the integrated review and defence command paper from concept to reality. In a minute, I will hand over to Major General Tom Coppinger Sims, CBE, Director of Strategy and Digitisation at Defence Digital, who will tell us about the new Defence Digital Strategy. He will then hand over to Mivy James, a Digital Transformation Director for BAE Systems Applied Intelligence, which is kindly partnering with us this morning. And she'll tell us how her team are going to deliver this morning's workshop. Um, as we're short on time this morning, we won't have the opportunity to move on to our normal interactive Q&A session, but the General and, Niv and Mivy have kindly agreed to respond after this morning to any questions submitted. That's enough from me. Now gives me great pleasure to hand over to a great supporter of both Nimbus 90 and advocate for defence digitalisation, Major General Tom Coppinger Sims. Thank you. Um, so good morning, everybody. And, and I suppose just to remind us why we're here, um, that collaboration word is particularly important. And I think it, I wouldn't be the first one to say that our partnerships in the West are probably the most significant offset we have in terms of the way we can make and keep friends across the world, but also across the wider defense industry. And I suppose uh, no better way to start than being a bit challenging of Richard, where he referred then to the defense members clicking on the second link. And I guess the point I'd make right up front from my perspective is that everybody in this audience is part of defense. Some of us wear uniforms, some of us wear civil service garb, uh, many of you are in industry. I think we all need to consider ourselves part of defense in this disrupted age. So hopefully that underpins why we're coming together. Uh, I have about 10 minutes now just to briefly highlight the new strategy for defense, the digital strategy for defense that we released on gov.uk uh, last week um, and should be available to all of you. So it'll be a brief introduction. Uh, and inevitably a bit of context to remind ourselves why we're coming together. I'm really grateful to, to Nimbus 90 and Mivi for setting this day together, because I think one of the weaknesses of our approach in Defence Digital remains reaching out beyond the confines of the Defence Digital pillar, beyond the confines of Strategic Command, and to the other frontline commands. And of course, we do it every day, but I don't think we can ever do it enough. And today is a chance to come together uh, with a bunch of folk from Army, Navy, Air Force, of course, others in strategic command and a good showing of defense digital folk to come together and start building a sense of community uh, and fellowship across the wider transformation landscape. So that's what we're here for. Uh, and clearly our industry partners joining us uh, for the first bit I'm afraid this is just a brief chance for me to introduce the strategy, which I know you'll then spend your weekend reading um, in due course on gov.uk. So slide please, Alexa. Now you'll all know that last year um, and the early part of this year saw an integrated review across uh, UK, 
national security uh, and defense. Uh, and you'll remember the prime minister standing up in parliament in November, announcing a very generous settlement for defense um, in the spending review that underpinned that, that integrated review. Um, clearly our digital strategy is defense digital's response to the integrated review and demonstrating how we seek to support the integrated review and the defense command paper that followed it. And clearly our strategy sits very firmly within wider defense strategy and also strategic commands activity. And most critically for strategic command, that responsibility to be defenses integrator across multiple domains. And of course, we now include in those multiple domains, not just the traditional domains of, of maritime land and air, but also the new kids on the block of cyber and space. Uh, and we'll cover that a bit as we go through. So this is the sort of diagnosis and where we want to get to slide that you see in front of you now. And I'll just focus on that dangerous vision word in the middle. Um, what we're aiming for is that defense values data as a strategic asset. And I'll steal a phrase here from the chief of the air staff who talks about data as our second most important asset after our people. And that's the sort of level ambition that we're setting out in our digital strategy, that we value data as our second most important asset after our people. Recognizing data as the mineral ore that fuels integration and enables a system of systems approach, moving from a platform centric approach to a system of systems approach. Now, clearly, we need to persistently deliver transformative capabilities to enable sustainable military advantage, military advantage over our adversaries with our allies and partners, but also what we call business advantage. And that is running the Department of Defense in a more productive and efficient manner, spending our money, taxpayers' money, more productively and efficiency, efficiently. Now, clearly, within that vision, those capabilities need to be secure, easily integrated, easy to use, and delivered both at scale and pace. So that's the vision. And, and you'll recognize why we use those sorts of words in a strategy document. To be very clear, though, I just want to bring that to life. And when the Prime Minister spoke in November, he, he mentioned specifically the vision of a soldier in a distant land being alerted to an ambush by sensors from satellites or aircraft overhead, with artificial intelligence helping us ingest that sensor data, um, recognize what was going on, and then alert that soldier in a distant land at sort of net speed. And he went on to say that the, the soldier would then be offered a cocktail of response options ranging from a kinetic strike through to other options, you know, maybe from a drone, maybe um, a cyber response uh, disrupting the enemy's activity. So you will all recognize that that relatively familiar picture now of a sort of recce strike complex enabled by digital, by data. And of course, those totemic words, artificial intelligence. And many of you will have read um, uh, The Kill Chain um, by Christian Prose, which sort of spells out that, that, that vision of kill chains. Equally, though, many of you will be aware there are other networks and, and chains of um, sensors, effectors, and decision makers. And of course, you know, we will want to explore that sort of vision. Uh, and that's the sort of thing that motivates me as an infantryman, as a, an, as, a, a, as a war fighter. But of course, the uses for data-driven digital technology and defense are multiple and manifold. And equally, I would, I would speak about the importance of, of AI and data and digital in the logistics chain, whether it's last mile logistics delivering ammunition to the front line, or as you'll see in the Times today, um, a drone refueling a fast jet at umpteen thousand feet, uh, or indeed large fulfillment warehouses in the core rear area, all of which I think you'll recognize from your daily lives effectively and what Amazon does for you every day and, and that they can deliver in the battlefield. I'd also highlight the sorts of things that are going on 
in the medical world at the moment, and, and there's no need to delve into COVID-19 at this stage, but you know, the sorts of things that are going on with smart medicines at the moment, a sensor could be a pill that I swallow tomorrow. Um, the, the effector could be a paramedic enabled by a telemedic thousands of miles away, connected by the digital backbone. Uh, and the decision maker could be that consultant sitting in London advising a paramedic forward thousands of miles away in the battle space about how to deal with me, the casualty on the ground, um, enabled by the sensor that I've swallowed that day to help understand my vital signs. So I think you'll all recognize how these chains of uh, sensors, effectors, and decision makers can come together for military and business advantage. I'd quickly highlight though where we're starting from, and that's the diagnosis on the left of this slide. And you will recognize, and, and if you're an industry, you'll recognize this in your own industry, but I'm sure all the defense, the, the uniform folk and the civil servants here will recognize what I'm talking about. We have not valued our data and we've fixed it in internal silos, if indeed we know where it is at all. And that's a bit of a problem for us. We have fragmented and obsolescent, not yet obsolete, but obsolescent technology. It's fading fast. We have critical digital skills gaps, both in our specialists, the sort of people in the digital function, those DDAT skills across defense, but also in our generalists, people like me and their ability to understand technology, understand how to adopt it, understand the cultural changes required to adopt it and how to make best use of it. And we, I think it's fair to say, have industrial age processes and culture, and that's stopping us from exploiting and adopting technology. So what are the outcomes that we Defence Digital are pursuing um, to get after that vision, whether it's a recce strike complex or a logistic link between sensor, shooter uh, and decision maker? So those outcomes are about exploiting data as an asset. They are about the right talent within a unified digital function. They are about securing our data, our systems and our people. And they are about delivering a modern technology platform. And lastly, but very importantly for the industry partners here, it's about a step change in digital delivery because we are just too slow at the moment. So I'm gonna stop there and not go on. I, I think those of you who heard me speak before will know that the two big pillars of our strategy are to build a digital backbone, a single secure modern digital backbone that gives us access to our data. And secondly, to build a federated digital foundry reaching out to all of the digital teams across defense to enable, empower and connect them. Uh, and I would hope that some of you take the time to read the digital strategy on gov.uk it's currently in a sort of PDF glossy version, but an HTML format will be out. And for those of you who are like me, an infantryman, there is a one pager to read, which saves you reading the whole document. So I'll shut up there and hand over to Mivi, but I hope that provides a, a useful reading to the rest of the day. But I just bring us back to where we started. This is about collaborating in pursuit of that vision. And if we can't out collaborate our adversaries, we don't stand much chance. Back to you, Richard and Mivy. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, I'm going to cover a bit about what we're going to do next in terms of the exercises and, and why we think this is a useful way of working. So we've been using Lightning Decision Jams, which are as Californian as they sound, and design sprints for a few years now in BA systems, and, and chose them as a way of working because they bring to life a lot of agile principles to things that are outside of the software delivery teams. The whole enterprise really needs to work in what I would call a sympathetic cadence to have any chance of, of achieving what agile promises. And I kind of use agile with a little a there rather than any particular methodology. So anyone who knows me will be uh, familiar with my grumbles about standard meetings. Um, I'd really like to make death by meeting mandatory reading for everybody who works in an office. Um, all too often meetings and workshops can feel like talking shops where little progress is made, particularly when, when we're figuring out how to get started with scoping and addressing a, a problem. It's really easy to fall into the trap of needing to understand the entire problem space, all of its exceptions, 
throw a load of complexity at it, try to predict every possible outcome, and then step back and admire the complexity of the problem and how clever we all are for, for being able to articulate it uh, without actually uh, identifying how to start fixing it. 